Hey guys, Michael Kwan here, back for another vlog. Uh, something that I've always enjoyed doing is trying new foods. I've had kangaroo jerky in Australia, escargot in Paris, and even duck tongue in Taiwan. But one thing that I have never tried is cat poo coffee. Until now. Earthy, aromatic, and smooth, like a turd. So, cat poo coffee, <laughs> also known as weasel coffee or civet coffee, is officially called kopi luwak and that refers to a process for the coffee and not so much about the specific variety or, or blend or bean specifically. And it literally translates from the Indonesian, kopi meaning coffee, and luwak referring to the Asian palm civet, which is native to Sumatra in Indonesia, a country very famous for its coffee. So I've got the package here of the coffee that I just tried. My friends took a trip to Indonesia. They brought it back as like a souvenir for me because they knew how much I love coffee. And it says Kopi Luwak Arabica. So Arabica beans. It says it's halal and 100% original, whatever that means. And it says premium wild Luwak coffee. I'll just read the description on the back here. It's produced by a company called Kopi Kenzi in Bali, Indonesia. And the description says, enjoy the great taste of the original Luwak coffee from Bali. Luwak has been known as very selective animal to eat cereal, especially the very overripe coffee bean. This product has good quality with special aroma and good taste. So Kopi Luwak can go for as much as like $700 a kilogram. Um, the ones that my friends brought back for me from Indonesia for 50 grams, it came to 51,000 Indonesian rupees, which worked out to about $4. So some quick math, that's about $80 a kilogram or $40 a pound. And you can find this stuff uh, on Amazon for a huge range of pricing too. So traditionally, what's supposed to happen is that these wild palm civets, 
they're very selective about the coffee cherry or coffee bean that they eat out in the wild. So that's the, the first thing that's supposed to make this stuff special. So they're very selective about what they eat. And then the second part is, how do I put this? It's the biological digestive process of them putting the coffee through their systems. And I guess that changes the chemical properties of the coffee. The local people go in the wild in search of these feces and then they collect the poop, clean it up, roast it, and we end up with kopi luwak, civet coffee, cat poo coffee. So I should preface this by saying that there are some more, I guess you would say modern or industrial practices for producing kopi luwak. They have the civets in these very small cages and they force feed them the, the coffee cherries, kind of eliminating that first part of them being selective about what they eat. And obviously these are very horrific conditions and there's a high mortality rate. So I'm very glad that the sample that my friends brought back me are from wild civets. So how does it taste? Well, I would say that there's a definite kind of earthiness to it that I would normally get from like a dark roast, but it doesn't taste like a dark roast at all. It's much lighter in color, but it doesn't really taste like a light roast either. It doesn't have that uh, brightness or citrus kind of sense to it that you normally get from light roast. It, there's a very distinct um, aroma or flavor to it. So I gave some to my wife Suzanne to try and she said that the flavor or the aroma reminded her of nong. Um, in Cantonese cuisine or home cooking I guess, it's when you have that leftover rice at the bottom of the pot and you add some tea or soup or hot water and you mix it up to have this kind of nourishing porridge. But then at the same time, I wouldn't say the kopi luwak tastes like rice, but like the, the aroma of it definitely reminds me of nong or the or what you do with the end of a bibimbap. It's a, very different than a lot of the other coffees that I've tried around the world. One thing that I will say is that the sample that my friends brought back to me from Indonesia, it came in a powder form. I don't know if you can actually get kopi luwak as whole bean, but they brought me back the powder. And what ended up happening with the powder is when it's mixed with the hot water and the brewing process for making the coffee, it becomes this really thick sludge, almost like chocolate syrup. So putting it through my Italian style stovetop espresso maker probably wasn't the best idea. I tried it again in like kind of more of a pour over kind of form uh, to try to overcome some of those concerns. And yeah, I still get that sludge. So uh, the water still had a hard time making it all the way through the filter, so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you ever have a chance to try the powdered kopi luwak yourself. So with all of that said, have you ever tried kopi luwak before? Or are there any other varieties of coffee that I don't know about you that you think I should try? Leave a comment below and I'll make sure to check those out. And uh, yeah, I guess that wraps things up for another week. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Smash that like button if that's what you're into. So until next week, I'm still Michael Kwan and uh, okay, thanks, bye.